In this video, we're going to set up an Apollo to work with Avid Pro Tools on a Mac. We're using an Apollo 8, but the concepts here apply to all Thunderbolt Apollos. If you haven't done so, please install the UAD software before watching so you can follow along. The Apollo workflow gives you a near-zero latency environment by providing input monitoring for all live audio through the Apollo interface, essentially replacing your DAW's software monitor function. This eliminates the round trip from the interface to computer and back again. The direct connection to your audio lets you hear, and more importantly, feel your live performance, complete with incredible real-time UAD processing. You can record and monitor through vintage compressors, reverbs, preamp models, or guitar amp emulations with no latency, just like a classic analog studio. Playback from Pro Tools or other DAWs is merged with live sound in Apollo, so audio is always in sync and host computer latency is completely avoided. The Apollo console application is the key to unlocking Apollo's unique real-time UAD processing capabilities. It emulates the workflow of a hardware console and allows you to monitor your audio, patch in effects, and create headphone mixes, all within Apollo's DSP. Inputs are shown as channel strips that are routed directly to the monitor output, so you always hear sound unless the channel's fader is pulled down or the channel is muted. The console's faders, mute, solo, and pan only affect what you hear in the speakers and do not affect the audio recorded in Pro Tools. Audio sent to Pro Tools originates either pre-insert or post-insert, depending on the position of the insert effect switch on the channel. When set to record, channel insert effects are committed and recorded in Pro Tools. When set to monitor, channel insert effects are heard in the monitors but not printed. Channels can be set individually or console-wide using the global record and monitor buttons. Unison preamp emulations are always printed as they are attached to Apollo Twin's physical preamps. Now let's take a look at the Apollo console settings. Click on the icon in the dock to open up the console application. Start by clicking the Settings button to access the Interface Settings window. In the Hardware tab, you can set the sample rate, clock source, digital mirroring, monitor operating level, input delay compensation, Q bus and alt speaker counts, and the function switch assignment. Second generation Apollos allow you to disable the monitor gain so you can use the monitor output with an external monitor controller. Note that when this is bypassed, the alt speaker count and function switch options are removed. You can also bypass the line input gain cell for an ultra clean line input path. The Core Audio tab gives you access to Apollo's unique flex driver capabilities that let you configure the inputs and outputs that are sent to Core Audio. The Display tab lets you set console metering, clip hold, peak hold, plugins always on top, device names, and the timeouts for modifiers. The Plugins tab gives you access to the control mode for how plugins respond to mouse control, and you can also see the complete list of UAD plugins in your system with their authorization status and show hide status for the lists within the Apollo console. Lastly, the MIDI tab lets you set an input device, channel, and note for the tap tempo function. To get started, let's go back to the hardware tab. The default settings are a great place to start, and they can be changed at any time. However, you may want to turn off input delay compensation, Input delay compensation is used to time-align multi-mic applications like drums with different plugins on the channels. Most of the time, it can be turned off to reduce latency and DSP consumption. Core Audio is the digital audio infrastructure of iOS and OS X. It allows you to route sounds and MIDI between applications and hardware. Computer sounds, browsers, iTunes, and DAWs like Pro Tools all use Core Audio, and you can use the Audio MIDI setup utility to set up and manage it. When using Pro Tools with third-party interfaces, I.O. is limited to 32 inputs and 32 outputs. This can be challenging when the physical I.O. exceeds that limit. Apollo's unique flex driver functionality helps solve this issue and lets you select which of Apollo's inputs and outputs you want to use in Core Audio and the order in which they appear. With Apollo's flex driver, you're free to fill the 32 I.O. with the inputs and outputs you want to use and skip the ones you don't. The Core Audio panel lets you manage Apollo's Core Audio driver. You'll see several buttons across the top of the Core Audio panel. Mode lets you switch between custom or default. Default lets you see all of the available inputs and outputs in your system. As soon as you make a change to an input or an output, it changes to custom. The I.O. Presets button lets you save custom presets for easy recall. 
This is great if you're working with different DAWs or configurations and need to switch quickly. The number of inputs and outputs button lets you set the number of streams you're sending to Core Audio. You'll see that 32 is named PT mode to help you remember to use it when working with Pro Tools. Lastly, the edit button lets you cascade or select consecutive choices when populating your lists. Let's start with the single Apollo 8. To make sure that all of the I.O. is present, click Default on the Mode button. You'll now see 32 inputs and 36 outputs. You'll need to set the number of outputs to 32 as well. You'll notice the Mode button changes to Custom and the preset goes from Automatic to Untitled. Let's save this as Apollo 8 Basic, as it's a great starting point, and this is all it's needed to get sound in and out of Pro Tools. Now launch Pro Tools. Before creating or opening a session, you need to select Apollo as the playback engine. From the Setup menu, open the Playback Engine dialog. Select Universal Audio Apollo from the pop-up menu and accept the dialog and click OK. Now you can create a blank session to work with. We've configured Apollo to send 32 inputs and outputs to Core Audio, and now we need to update Pro Tools I.O. with the current settings. Go to the I.O. Setups menu. Select the Inputs tab. Select All Inputs and delete them. Then click Default to import the configuration we just created in Apollo. Do the same for outputs and buses and you're good to go. We'll cover hardware inserts and advanced routing with Apollo Expanded Systems in a separate video. On Mac computers, the hardware buffer size used by Pro Tools is set in the playback engine settings. With Apollo, DAW buffer size doesn't really matter because Apollo handles audio routing and processing with dedicated DSPs in the interface. That means you can get your sound dialed in with EQ, compression, or any other UAD plugins. You're free to set up reverbs and effects all in real time without compromising your computer's processing power or suffering the annoying delay common with other interfaces. If you run native effects or play virtual instruments inside Pro Tools, set the hardware buffer size to a low setting, like 64 or 32 samples. Low buffers use more of the computer's power for playback, so fewer tracks and native processes are possible, but latency is minimized and instruments are much easier to play. For mixing, you can set the hardware buffer size high so the computer has more horsepower to dedicate to the mixing engine. You'll have to experiment to find the best settings for your computer. For now, let's set the buffer size to 128. You want to enable Pro Tools Low Latency Monitor Mode so you don't hear an unintentional doubling while recording. Low Latency Monitoring mutes the input as soon as you punch in, so you'll only hear the input through Apollo, which is perfect for overdubbing. Pro Tools Delay Compensation corrects for plug-in and I.O. latency, so be sure this feature is enabled within Pro Tools. Pro Tools automatically sends the session sample rate to Apollo's internal clock, so you can switch between sessions with different sample rates without needing to restart or change any settings on Apollo. If you use an external clock, set the source and hardware settings, and keep in mind that you'll need to manually set the external clock to match your session sample rate. Virtual Channels lets you route the audio output from various applications to channel strips in the console. It can be really useful to route Pro Tools' main output to a pair of virtual channels instead of the default main monitor. This lets you use a fader to control Pro Tools' output level and makes it easier to blend live sources with DAW playback right in the console. In I.O. setups, go to the Bus tab and map the output of Mon left and right to Virtual 1-2. In the console, link Virtual 1 and 2 to create a stereo fader and give it a custom name. You may also want to route your computer audio through virtual channels, so you can have them on a channel strip and experiment with plugins. To do so, launch the Audio MIDI Setup application and view the Audio Devices window. Click on Outputs and resize the left column to expose the channel names. With unmodified settings, you'll see virtual channels 1 through 8 are streams 21 through 28. Now click Configure Speakers and set the left and right speakers to the virtual channels you want to use. For example, to use Virtual 1 and 2, select Streams 21 and 22. Then click Apply and Done to commit the changes. Your computer audio now plays through channel strips and you can use plugins to make it sound great. There are several ways to set up your headphone mixes in Apollo. The simplest is to set the Q output source to monitor. Everything you hear in the speakers is routed to the headphone output. Input levels are mixed on console channel faders, and DAW playback levels are set in Pro Tools, and you control the overall volume with the headphone controls on the front panel of your Apollo. 
Another simple method comes for free when you route Pro Tools output to virtual channels. In addition to controlling Pro Tools volume level with a fader for your main mix, it also gives you a send you can use to create a separate blend of live inputs and DAWs for the headphones. You can set the cue source to monitor and use the main mix, or set it to a cue and create a separate mix with the sends. You can also create completely discrete headphone mixes using a combination of console and Pro Tools sends. The console recall plugin is used to keep the Apollo console's routing and processing synced up to your DAW session. Console recall takes a snapshot of the entire console and stores all settings every time you hit save in Pro Tools. Simply insert the console recall plugin on the master fader and click the sync button to enable automatic saving. In addition to providing access to Apollo's monitor control directly from Pro Tools, it ensures that when you open a session months or years from now, the tracking front end will be exactly the same as it was the last time you opened the session. Of course, Apollo's DSP resources can be applied where they're needed. You can track with real-time UAD processing in the console, and you can also use UAD plugins in Pro Tools for mixing. So whether you're tracking, mixing, or mastering, Apollo provides the sound quality, low latency performance, and power for all phases of audio production. You'll find more information and current software at uaudio.com.